Hey everybody, welcome to Geeks Fun Alive. I hope you're all extremely well this evening. Now, I want to emphasize something as soon as we start, and that's the whole purpose of this video, hence I'm putting it at the beginning. This video is not yet another overall review or look into the case involving Philly Drone Life, the drone pilot and YouTuber facing $182,000 of proposed FAA fines. That has already been done on this channel, and you can go watch that for a more in-depth look. Also, channel members will be getting a deeper dive of all three of the court documents. If you want to see that, you can become a member from just a dollar or a pound a month. So the deeper dives are really done over there. Instead, this video has a very different objective. Over the past week or so, I've had a lot of emails, DMs and discussions from viewers and with viewers concerned that this case might herald a new era of harsh enforcement policy from the FAA. First for the next you type of thing. That, in my opinion, is simply not is what is happening here. And today I will show you how he was caught and explain why I do not think this type of fine level or even this type of fine full stop or court action will be a regular thing against US drone flyers. The world of drones, particularly those flown by hobbyists, has a lot of enemies out there who would like nothing more than for us all to simply go away. But in this case, this is not a general attack, in my opinion. This video is also not an endorsement or, an, or a judgment either way. I'm just here to provide some context and go from the court documents rather than just pure conjecture, as it were. To date, we'll take a look at the evidence presented by the FAA in court uh, in terms of why they decided to issue the proposed fines, how they gained the evidence to allow them to do so, in their opinion, and then why they upped the game to this level with civil action in federal court. We'll also take a look at the injunction put in place during the last hearing, which of course in itself is pending future action, and look what that tells us too. Now, FAA enforcement is in writing and published for all to read. There's nothing really mystical about it. In fact, they recently updated it and pushed it out through all of their social media channels. The document tells us that the FAA enforcement focuses on what they call engagement and education first. Sounds fun, doesn't it? With the step of fines and court action seen as essentially a last step. Unless, of course, there is a more serious issue to begin with, but then generally you'll find that that will be something which will, will actually um, bring about criminal action, which would be taken against the drone flyer. This guidance, which impacts this case directly, is regarding their civil action taken directly by the FAA rather than DOJ, etc. There is a lot of focus on establishing contact and sending representatives via the phone and even in person to provide education and guidance to the pilot. In their evidence to the court in this case, the FAA claim they made several attempts to provide this education first. We have this particular excerpt. Uh, which comes from their, their, their motion. On three occasions, the FAA warned him, counseled and educated him and spoke with him about his improper small unmanned aircraft systems operations. In defiance of the applicable regulations and the warnings he received, Decursio persisted in operating small uh, uh, aircraft systems in a dangerous and unacceptable manner. The United States brings its action to enforce the safety regulations that Decursio continues to knowingly violate. So they do, as I say, they do claim that they've had that contact with him. In terms of how they found him, Philly himself talks a lot in the, his recent um, uh, comments online about, about this, this action, about people making complaints about him. And sure enough, within the FAA evidence submitted for their motion, there are many mentions discussing citizen complaints. In fact, they even note that the complaints within the motion are just some of the many that they received. So it is these complaints that the FAA claim first, that they claim they actually had them first look at the YouTube channel and then return to him after his more recent long range flights over Philly with the DJI Air 2S, which was one of his most recent videos. Whether this was seen as more serious or not, as it's no longer a sub 250 gram drone, purely speculation, perhaps they were just waiting for the moment where they felt new action was needed or perhaps the file was in a backlog, who knows. The original fines were for flights that they had really the, the golden trifecta for prosecution. Unlike many online videos, the fact that he streamed them live gave them a precise time and date for the infractions. 
then he was also very obviously the pilot and he screen shared the app. So his telemetry was on screen the whole time. This gave authorities pretty much all they needed. Now, the FAA papers lean heavy into creating a narrative around the attitude of the defendant, including submitting videos like a live stream titled F the FAA Live Show and mentioning that Philly had stated on air that he will never pay the fines, etc. The judge did ask to see those videos prior to the hearing. <clears throat> This particular excerpt, as you can see here, reads almost as disturbing as the actual threat that he, uh, he poses flying. His flagrant contempt for safety regulations, he live streamed a video dated 15th of February 2022 titled the F the AA live show. In that video, he threatens to crash his Suez into a building. Um, De Curcio posts himself making statements like, I can do whatever I want. The FAA is scared of me and bragging about violating the regulations. Uh, he has stated in his videos that he will never comply with the FAA regulations and encourages other SUAS operators to follow his lead in a video dated October 12, 2021. Decursio stated that he thinks the FAA cannot do anything to him. He plans to see how many violations he can accumulate in one flight and encourages other operators to do the same to push back against the FAA. So all of this shows a picture of a unique situation. And these are the reasons that I do not think this will happen more widely to other drone flyers, just again, in my opinion. FAA enforcement policy was followed and they, they believe they did attempt several times to deal with the problems through their education and engagement. When that failed, they moved on to more serious warnings and then the proposed fines themselves. Through, through the content on a YouTube channel following the fines, the FAA then showed that the fly was still, in their opinion, blatantly flying against regs and was happy to tell the FAA to go F themselves and confirmed he wouldn't follow their rules. So this begins to be a bit of a narrative. And that kind of narrative isn't something that we would see usually for your average hobbyist, because of course your average hobbyist won't have a YouTube channel with thousands of followers, etc., more recently, just before these papers were filed in federal court, content showing an Air 2S flight across the city was also shown. The FAA notes citizen complaints and then filed for this injunction. So for me, it is unlikely as most people will stop at the former levels of enforcement, whether you agree with them or not, and also would unlikely have that many complaints being made consistently to the FAA about them because they're not broadcasting, etc., so even if you have a single video that you put up that people complain about, the fact is you you probably don't have a continuous YouTube channel, uh, which is going to be putting out content, more and more content around the issue. And, um, you know, there were some very angry uh, live streams, et cetera, on it as well. Often in cases where the FAA catch a YouTuber suing something naughty, they'll actually ask them to produce a video to explain what happened and ask their audience to follow the rules. So that shows how much importance the FAA put on this kind of public messaging, essentially. So perhaps saw the negative output as something to stop with uh, pretty much equal importance. So this is, this is where they talk about that. De Curcio's publicizing his hazardous conduct traits an entirely new level of threat. Now, that's interesting, isn't it, that they would call it an entirely new level of threat in terms of someone talking out against FAA regulations, essentially. Um, as, as However dramatic they are, that is essentially what this person's doing. They're talking out against them, and it's seen as a new level of threat. As one citizen complaint put it, this will snowball with thousands of copycat pilots doing equally dangerous and illegal flying. Another citizen expressed how deeply concerning for both the safety uh, of the residents and commuters in Philadelphia, as well as reputation of the drone pilot community. At the hearing on this motion, should one be necessary, the government will present the FAA witnesses to testify about the complaints received and the ongoing flights and YouTube posting. Based upon all the evidence presented in a hearing, the court should grant preliminary relief to safeguard the public. So essentially, what they're doing here is they're asking for the injunction to be put into place really without a hearing, but a, a presumptive injunction, really. It, it, it doesn't smack right, does it? When, it when, you, when you talk about this kind of thing being an entirely new level of threat, because it doesn't really take into context the shows. It doesn't really take into context everything that's happening around it. 
And yeah, it, it just, you know, this will snowball with thousands of copycat pilots doing equally dangerous and illegal things. I don't think that that really is something which was ever going to happen in this situation personally, but that, that's just my personal opinion. The, and, and indeed, we haven't even seen a single copycat, as far as I'm aware, that, that has a, a, a similar channel to that, to, to that particular pilot's channel. The injunction is now in place and we will take a look at it in a moment. However, keep in mind that it is, as I was saying, it's, a, it's, it's an assumptive injunction which has not yet had the rigour of a defence put against it. The FAA asked the court to place the injunction subject to defence and that's what the court had done. There is another date in April where there will be an opportunity to lift that injunction, but that would require evidence in the opposite direction. So we'll have to wait um, and actually see what happens there. So let's have a very quick look at the injunction itself, at the order granted by the court, and we'll just run through it here. So as of now, 29th day of February, uh, the motion is granted and it is hereby ordered that one, should the defendant wish to earn any monetary profit from his drone operation, he is prohibited from operating any drone until he passes the appropriate FAA issued test and obtains a license. So essentially, if he wants to fly for money, uh, the furtherance of a business thing, so that does include his YouTube channel, he would need to get the 107 first. Should the defendant wish to operate any drone only as a hobbyist, he must identify, review and comply with the safety guidelines of a recognised community organisation. Obviously, as you know, at the moment in the States, you have to uh, ad adopt the safety recommendations of a CBO if you're flying um, as a hobbyist, in the, uh, as a recreational pilot. Whether or not you're a member of that organisation, you do have to do that. Three, for all future drone operation, whether as a hobbyist or for profit, the defendant must comply with the following regulations. He must register any and all drones that he seeks to operate. He may not operate any drone more than 400 feet above ground, and he may not operate any drone in controlled airspace or in a manner that interferes with a manned aircraft. Uh, it then moves on to point D of, of the section three. He must maintain visual line of sight. Um, at all times or in the events that he uses goggles must have an individual with him that operates as a spotter i don't know if Stu actually counts uh, he may not operate any drone over moving traffic and he may not operate the drone over any person or people unless the person people are directly participating in the operation of the drone or are located under a covered structure or inside a stationary vehicle and he may not operate any drone at night and that was ordered at the court and as I say there is that that next one that next hearing in April because this is a, an assumptive order so there is the opportunity to have uh, a hearing to actually um, lift the the court order so that's the court order itself so as you can see essentially what the FAA are saying is that they just want him to fly within the regs so why bother with that at all if they think that he won't follow it well it is of course a serious thing being dragged into court it is intimidating and certainly something that for most people would like to avoid so therefore would avoid getting into the situation in the first place i suppose plus breaching this civil injunction could then lead to the next steps of enforcement including criminal action from contempt of court all the way through from there basically so it really is it's upping the ante but again it's upping the ante to a unique scenario and in my opinion one that's unlikely to be repeated ever again in this way sure the FAA will enforce and remote ID will certainly bring its own challenges in terms of action taken against drone flies but this is not the start of some kind of move against the hobby in this kind of way this is a federal agency carrying out what they see as their job. The drone flyer has not followed the regs despite increasing action, and that will continue to ramp up until he does. It's simply the way it will happen. You keep poking the bear, as people would say. This case is also unique as there is no defense mechanism. Usually with the proposed fines and even at the warning stage, the defendant would gain legal representation and you would see the case impact of this. The lawyer would negotiate with the FAA to have many of the fines removed following analysis of the evidence they may or may not hold, looking at pretty much most of the other cases where fines are proposed, often against corporate, corporate entities, in fact most of them are, the final amounts are, that, are, that are paid are far below the proposed amounts. But with no representation throughout this process, the FAA have essentially continued almost unchecked. Now, the court system will hopefully bring some balance and some checks into place, but not at the levels that representation would. 
So there we have it, how he was caught and why I don't think it would happen to you. The pilot showed too much information and did not yield when first warned by the airspace regulator, so they just simply kept coming back for him. Whether or not you agree with the regs, that is how he was caught. The unique situation around his style of YouTube channel, continuation of flights even into 2024, is certainly what brought about the current action. That is something I feel is not going to be repeated. So it's not going to happen to you. As I say, the case continues. The next hearing will probably be the most interested. We will keep you updated, probably via members' posts and on the community tab, as I don't think we'll need any more wider channel coverage moving forward from there, basically.